What up, everybody? It's your boy, Ash. Happy Monday, guys, here. Hopefully you had an awesome weekend. I'm coming to you guys today with my review of One Piece Manga Chapter 985. And what a chapter 985 was here. It's one of my favorite chapters of the year so far. It was really, really fun to read here. It was chaotic. There was a lot of information in it here. We had a little bit of action in it. And finally, the scabbards are really starting to get serious and starting to get into battle mode. So really, really fun chapter here. So let's talk about it. So starting with that cover page this week, it was really cool just to kind of see Law, Kid, and uh, Luffy together, the three captains. It's not often that we get to see them all together, but it looks like they're just on some parrots hanging out. I like that Luffy shirt had a like a lucky guy on it and a guy with a straw hat on him. So really cool. It was good to kind of just step away from the uh, Beige's cover story a little bit. Hopefully we're almost done with that. As you guys know, I'm getting, getting a little tired of Beige's cover story. It's lasted a little longer than I wanted it to, but really cool color page. It was a great way to start the chapter. It really just gives like a, a vibrant start to a, a read. So that was really cool. So jumping into this chapter, it's called the new Onigashima Project, and what a fun chapter it was. We start with the Scabbers. So we started where Law's crew ended up here. They're on the backside of Onigashima, and Law at the end of the chapter said that, or chapter 984, said that there's two entrances, a top and a bottom entrances. So it looks like the Scabbers took the top entrance that leads to Kaido and his main castle, and maybe Law has went to the bottom entrance because Law is not in this chapter at all. Maybe he separated and he's going to go do his own thing. We know Law is extremely smart. So he's going to do his own thing. He's going to go find something to do, cause some chaos here. Law is a surgeon of death. So he's going to have some fun on his own. But the scabbards are on their way to enter the castle and all of a sudden the doors open and all of a sudden we see Conjuro come out with a bunch of beast pirates and a few of his drawing samurais, the headless horseman samurai. So that was cool. It makes sense that Conjuro would kind of guess where they'd be coming from here. He spent an awful lot of time with the scabbards. He knows them very well. He knows their thought process. He knows they're not going to give up that easily, even though Fukuroku Joe said that there was no samurai on the island. I'm sure Kondro didn't believe that. I was like, I'll go check myself. So obviously the Beast Pirates know that he's one of the uh, Orochi's men. So they're going to follow him. And he's obviously very strong. So he's stronger than most of these fodder Beast Pirates. So they're following him out. So a confrontation starts between the Scabbards and uh, Kondro, which is great because Kondro needs to die. Unless he has some like double spy thing going on, Kondro needs to die for all the things he did for betraying the Scabbards. So it was cool the saying he's like, after all, I know you better than anyone. So they come out and the drawings he makes of the Headless Horsemen are amazing. They look really good. Now we're seeing how actually great his drawing skills are. And we know from the crane he made the other time, but all that time making like the sad dragon and the bird <laughs> just really, really threw everybody off. So it'll be cool once we get to like see his powers in depth more when he gets into a real battle. But he confronts the scabbards and the scabbards in the snow. It's such a cool, cool scene. It really, really looks well. I can't wait for the anime to make this because I think it's going to look really pretty. The anime has been doing an amazing job recently, by the way. If you haven't been watching the anime episodes, I don't review the anime episodes. I kind of want to, but uh, that's just too much. The anime episodes are amazing, amazing right now. So go check them out. But I can't wait for this scene to be animated. I think the scabbards look really cool with the snow and then all the beast pirates coming out with Kondro's drawings. I think it looks really cool. So now the conversation start and Kondro gets a reunion with Izo. It's been a while since Izo and Kondro saw each other because Izo left the island a long, long time ago with Whitebeard after his trip with Odin. So Kondro has seen the rest of the scabbards, but he hasn't seen Izo in a while. So it was cool to see that reunion. And then Izo mentions the samurai warriors here with their heads cut off, a very artful of you. So obviously Izo knows Kondro very well as well. So it was cool to see that. But then Kondro kind of rubs the salt in the wounds a little bit when he starts to talk about Momo. So after the little talk, he talks about, or the scabbards asked how Momo was to release Momo. And then Kondro tells him, Oh, that little brat put up a fight. So we saw last time Momo obviously is being crucified, but before that he found a dagger. So he actually freed himself, was on his way to run away. Well, obviously he's an eight year old kid. He's not going to outrun someone with hockey and a seasoned samurai warrior like Kondro. So Kondro obviously catches him, but in the process of catching him, Momo actually cuts his hand and it looks like just a baby little paper cut or something. He just put a little bandaid on it for, which was pretty funny. 
but it triggered something in Kanajo, and Kanajo not only beat the crap out of Momo, but it said that if it wasn't for Odin's blood, Momo would probably be dead right now. So he beat him very close to death. If it was a normal child, Kanjo definitely would have beat uh, Momo to death. So that's crazy that maybe he has some like bloodlust here, or he just has a really, really bad temper. But, or he just was sick of Momo and sick of the Kazuki clan, because he... Based on the Kurizumi clan, they hate the Kazuki, so maybe it's just some bad blood. But man, oh man, Momo was beat almost to death, and you see the scene of him punching Momo in the face, and it doesn't look like Kondro at all, but whatever, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. But the one who takes this most to heart is Kiku, which I wasn't expecting. I thought some of the other scabbards, Asher Doji and Dogstorm, I mean, these guys would kind of step up and really take the full frontal of Kanjo or... But Kanjiro, sorry, I don't know why I keep saying Kanjiro. Kanjiro, but Kiku really takes this heart. And we know how much she loves Momonosuke. As like a big sister would, she really wants to raise him up to be the proper Shogun that they know he could be. So Kiku really takes this to heart. And she's finally had enough of Kanjiro's mouthing off about Momo. So she finally is like, you can shut your mouth. And I'm going to read the quote because I this scene... I cannot wait for the scene to be animated. It says, you may shut your mouth now, Kondro. The wounds this one's katana leaves do not vanish in the afterlife. Like snow that remains in the spring, they will continue to torment your soul for eternity. And all of a sudden, her sword is out and she's got her battle armor on and she, oh my God, she looks amazing. Kiku, Loki, ever since we got to Wano and she cut off that uh sumo wrestler guys top knot we knew kiko was a badass but now that she's got the samurai we get the full name the oda box the vassal of kuzuki kiko nojo of the fallen snow so cool her samurai armor has like the flower petals all over it here it's got the flower petals on the helmet as well and just looking at this armor it's such a cool armor <laughs> in between you see dog storm asking cat viper about his new uh Double barrel shotgun hand. He's like, what is that? He's like, mm, nifty hand. <laughs> so a little bit of comedy in there. But finally, we get a confrontation. Kanjiro and Kiku finally clash. And it looks like they connect swords. There's no huge lightning, electric, hockey confrontation. But this is the key to uh, the other scabbard. So, okay, it's time for battle. And all, they all get ready here. You see uh, Ashura Doji. You see Kawamatsu get their swords out here. And... <laughs> Uh, Cat Viper's got his gun up, but my favorite is Izu in the middle. If you didn't notice, he's got his head down and his gun up here. And he's already looks like a badass. And I'm really excited to see the scabbards. And they're awfully gonna, they're obviously just gonna waste these beast pirates because the beast pirates have no chance against the scabbards. So this is gonna be a quick fight, but I'm interested to see how Kiku and uh, Kanjiro's fight ends up. And we see a little bit of a glimpse of it towards the end of the chapter, and I'll talk about it as we get there. But continuing to move on here. We get another little scene of Cat Viper talking to Dogstorm about his leg. So Dogstorm, not only not going to get outshone by Cat Viper, now has a peg leg sword, kind of cheeky style. So instead of just the stump, now he's got his sword on his leg. Now he's a two store style user, so very cool. And they're just cutting through the beast fire. So we kind of leave off there, and we kind of transition into the castle again. So this is where things start to get exciting. We transition to Luffy and Yamato again. So Yamato starts speaking of Kazuki Odin and she's like, just like Odin or just kind of like Odin, as Ace's brother, you have to take me on your shit. And Luffy's like, what? You're not Odin. So no, <laughs> that's just not how that's just going to work. She's like, you're right. You're more like Odin than I am. So very interesting to see. But she says this because she's not free and Odin wants everything to be free. He was free to kind of leave the country and do what he wanted to do. He traveled. And because uh, Yamato can't leave the country, he doesn't have the freedom that Odin did. And that's the way I took it based on what she was saying. So it's interesting to see. And we find out that she's been wearing cuffs for 20 years. And they're very similar to the cuffs that Sanji had on Whole Cake Island that would explode if he left the territory. So I'm assuming that if she left maybe Onigashima or even like well, Wano in general, like if she went over the waterfall, that the cuffs around his hands would explode. So despite trying to uh, beat her father down, 
uh, Yamato had no chance. I mean, Kaido beat her down and made her realize that it was impossible to leave the island. So he's been stuck there for years and years, 20 years. And we know his age is 28 now, which is cool. So just a little bit older than Luffy, about Ace's age. So that's cool to see him. And then Luffy's like, do you want me to take him off? Obviously, he has the Ryuju hockey now. Ryugo hockey? Ryugo hockey, yeah. So he can... Just like he did in the prison where he took off uh, Higuro's of the flowers uh, neck one. Those are the spiky ones. A little different, but I assume he can do it the same way by using the hockey and taking them off. So we'll see. Unfortunately, they don't get to take off the cuffs in this chapter because they get distracted by Kaido's announcements here. And during the middle of their talk between Luffy and Yamato, all of a sudden they're like, Kaido's making his announcement. Let's turn on the transponder snails. So all of a sudden, Kaido starts to talk and Luffy and Yamato like poke their heads through the floorboards and you see it start to bow a little bit of, on, like under their weight. So obviously kind of figure what's gonna happen. It's cartoon style. If it starts to bow, it's gonna break. So, but this is where we start to get the new Onigashima project plan. So Kaido starts into talking about it here and he's talked a little bit about Whitebeard's final war and now how the uh, seven warlords have been disbanded and how the world government's getting cocky. They have some new power that they think is invincible, that they don't need the pirates anymore. And then Kaido starts talking about his plan to join with the big mom pirates here. In other words, did I hear you? And then the best part is as he's talking about his alliance with big mom, big mom just bursts onto the scene, just through the walls with an entire army of homies that she made on the way. And we see like sandals and lanterns, there's a lantern, lantern guy and a bang, bang, like a bell guy. And there's, um, oh, there's so many, and I can't even count how many there are, but she's got her own little army. But finally she captured Zeus and obviously Prometheus is behind her as well. So in the middle of this speech, we get to find out that Zeus has been captured, not only Zeus, but Nami and Carrot as well. So, and obviously Nami is very worried about Zeus. Zeus looks like he's completely out of it. So we're a little nervous about what's going to happen with Nami and Carrot if they're in trouble. But obviously Robin and uh, Jimbei noticed that they were captured as well. So we'll see what those four do in the next chapter. But even the Beast Pirates are like, man, she is terrifying up close here. So that's what the strongest hag is. Uh, so it was cool to see that. But it really kind of cements in this uh, uh, alliance between Kaido and Big Mom. Now that Big Mom is actually there. And we didn't know how it was going to work if Big Mom never showed up. And with Yamato not being there as well, they were going to really take this alliance seriously. But it looks like Big Mom and Kaido are all in for this here. So as they start to talk... Kaido continues and says that we're going to claim the One Piece here. That's their goal. Kaido and Big Mom's goal is to claim the One Piece. And how they're going to do it? By using the ancient weapons to put the world at fear. So they're looking for the ancient weapons and going for the One Piece. That's terrifying to think of because with their collective pirate groups together, they obviously have the resources to do that. So they're a very, very dangerous force coming into the new world. And a huge threat to every single force out there. Not only Luffy's groups, but the world government, the revolutionaries here. Not many, if any, group is going to be able to fight Kaido and Big Mom together. I mean, it took the entire world government to fight Whitebeard, one guy, by himself with his crew. So I don't think they're going to beat Kaido and Big Mom together. So we'll see what's going on here. So, and obviously the buyer. The Beast Pirates and the White or Big Mom Pirates are super ecstatic about this. They're excited to cause some chaos here. And they're really to get violent and kind of destroy the world. So they're all for it here. And <laughs> the best part of this chapter, one of the best parts, there's great parts in this chapter, but the best part is like Orochi. It's like, <laughs> that's a cool plan, man. Good for you. Uh, as long as it doesn't have anything to do with Wano. And all of a sudden, Kaido asks, which raises a question. The One Piece, that's what I'm going to get. So I'm reading that. Obviously, Luffy is not going to let anyone else get the One Piece. But as he talks about that, he talks about the followers of Orochi. And now they have to make a choice whether to join Kaido's crew and become pirates or die. Because their plan for Wano is to create even more weapons factories to create or to make Wano a desolate wasteland a pirate paradise of chaos and destruction and fun for pirates everything a pirate could want very similar to like blackbeard's island but probably a little even more chaotic and run down than that so 
they're planning to destroy the flower capital to e create even more weapons factories to really destroy Wano altogether. And then they're going to create a new flower capital on Onigashima. So that's the new Onigashima project. The new Onigashima is going to be Wano. And then the flower capital is going to be on Onigashima, the current Onigashima. So that's his new plan. That's the new Onigashima project here. And obviously, Orochi is having none of this here. He starts to talk back to Kaido and he says, Kaido, wait a moment. The flower capital is my territory. Who do you think allowed you to make all those wet? And as soon as he starts to say weapons, King holds up his scabbard. And in one foul swoop, Kaido takes the sword and cuts Orochi's head off. Oh my God, I was stunned in my live reaction when I saw that here. But good for you, Kaido. Uh, didn't think Kaido would be the one to turn on Orochi and kill him, but I'm so glad he did. And hopefully Orochi didn't see it coming and just shocked him. I don't think Orochi's dead. I'll say that right now. I don't think Orochi's dead because he's got the ancient fruit. So I think he's just going to pop up another head or he's going to just grow two more. Who knows? But I don't think Orochi's dead. I think he has to be killed by the scabbards, by Kinemon or Momo or Zoro or someone. Denjiro would have a lot of input for that. So I don't think Kaido's going to be the one to kill him. But for now, the betrayal of Kaido and Orochi, amazing. Good for you, Kaido. The one good thing you've done in this arc because you're a bastard by yourself. But Orochi, for now, is dead Hallelujah. Orochi sucks. I think you guys know my feelings about Orochi, but he sucks. I'm so glad he got his head cut off. So it's just a great scene to see. But everyone is stunned by this move by Kaido. So they shocked the whole world. Even Fukurokujo looks absolutely scared out of his skin. And the only one who's laughing about this is Big Mouth. She just laughs like, ma, 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 ma. <laughs> so she's enjoying this here. And Kaido states that the Kurizumi clan and the Kazuki clans, the matters that concern them, have nothing to do with us and our plans. So he's done playing this scared game of Kazuki Kizu, or Kozuki clan with the Kurizumi clan. He's done playing around. He wants to move forward with his plans here, and no one's going to stop him. So hopefully this means that his partnership with Orochi is completely done, and Orochi kind of has to fend for himself now, which would be great to see if he's on his own and has to flee back to Wano before things get serious. I'm all for it, but now Luffy notices that Momo is on the stage, and as he notices here, Kaido makes his final announcement that we are turning this country into a pirate emperor in preparation for the coming war. We'll be raging out of more proper raids. Tonight, Onish Onigashima becomes the flower capital. So as he says this, the reason he wanted Yamato there is because he announces that Yamato is going to be the new shogun of Onigashima or the flower capital that they're making. So Yamato is taking Orochi's place as the new Shogun as Kaido and Big Mom start their campaign around the world. So he wants Yamato there to kind of hold down the fort of new Onigashima. Obviously the flower capital is going to be on the Onigashima, the island they're on now. That's going to be their little hideout. So that's really cool. And we end this chapter out with Yamato and Luffy running towards the stage. Obviously, they crash through the ceiling to the floor, and Yamato is having none of it. She's like, over my dead body, you stupid dad. So she's having a great reaction to it, and Luffy's like, hey, figure this out. Let's take me to Momo. Take me to the stage. So they're running to the stage, so that's where we ended the chapter off here. Really, really cool. I mean, huge announcement by Kaido. Not only did he announced that the flower capital is going to be moved to Onigashima, but that Wano, the main Wano island, will be the new Onigashima, a pirate paradise where they're going to create more weapons factories to kind of fund their campaign to kind of take over the world. And they're going to go on raids and really, really, really start to get into this piracy thing and make a huge push for the One Piece. Now, if they actually found the One Piece, they'd probably kill each other for it. So... <laughs> Obviously, this alliance isn't going to last very long, but for now, it's a huge threat to the entire world. But before the chapter ended, as Kaido's talking, we see one little scene that I wanted to talk about before, and I kind of mentioned it earlier when I was talking about the scabbards, but we see a sword dripping with blood, and you see right next to it that there's a, like a kimono with flowers on it, and this is assumed to be Kiku with a bloody sword, and then you see her helmet, and she's crying 
through the helmet here with a little bit coming out of her mouth. And obviously she's thinking of Momo, but whose blood is it? If it's hers, maybe it's dripping from her arm and Kondro clipped her or she really put a lot of damage onto Kondro already. He may have to retreat and maybe Kinemon will have the finishing blow later on him. I don't know, but hopefully Kiku really put Kondro in his place here. But that bloody scene, it was a huge little snippet, but it was just enough to get us curious about it. So really, really cool little insert Oda did there. But we'll see what happens with Yamato and Luffy running towards the stage here. Now that Onigashima is going to be turned into the Flower Capital and the Wano is going to be the Flower Capital is going to be turned into new Onigashima. We'll see how Orochi reacts. I still don't think he's dead, so we'll see the repercussions of Kaido killing Orochi and what his men, the other samurai, decide to do. If they're smart, they'll join Kaido because it would be stupid to go against Kaido at this point. So we'll see how he does. But that was a chapter, a lot of information. I feel like I could have kept talking about this for a long time. Sorry, this is a little longer than my reviews usually are. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this chapter. Comment below with you guys' favorite scene here. What are your thoughts on the new Onigashima project? And do you think Orochi is actually dead? Or is his devil fruit, his mystical devil fruit power, going to just pop up another head? Is he going to be somehow alive and kind of wimp away to Wano? So let me know your guys' thoughts. Don't forget to like, subscribe, guys. We're on the journey to 100 subscribers. That's my goal here, so I can't wait. Thank you guys for all the help. Love you guys. Peace. Enjoy the rest of your day.